I don't know. I just uh, love music and I love to play it. And I have since I was very young. And uh, I've, uh, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, I, this is what I do for my life and my living for over 56 years. I've been a professional uh, musician and uh, I hope to continue for many more years. Uh, but I just, uh, I love to play. I love music. Uh, I don't do too many things that are not music related. I have a huge iTunes collection. I'm a listener of all kinds of music. And uh, uh, I love many, many styles of music, many different players, uh, many composers. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I just, this is what I love to do. And, uh, and this is a, uh, I'm lucky that I uh, started early and learned the business early and was able to make wise decisions about what I should do. And, uh, and here I am, I'm on tour for, I've, I've done probably close to 6,000 shows in my life. I know I'm past 5,000 and uh, I don't know how many recordings I've made. It's just, uh, it's hard to keep track of them all. Well, I'm, I have, I choose great people to play with. And, uh, uh, that's an important thing. Not only are they great musicians or singers, but they're also, uh, good people and enjoyable people and being on stage with them generally is enjoyable. Uh, uh I, I say many times, I live to play live and I play live to live, uh, meaning that that's the most important thing for me is to be on stage. Recording is nice and it's okay, but uh, live is where it's at. I mean, I record so I can go play live, you know, make songs so I can go out and play live. That's the ultimate thing. So I, I'm just uh, lucky to have good people around me that uh, enjoy getting on stage and uh, uh expressing ourselves on the on the instrument uh there are many people now that go on youtube or instagram and they play into the camera and they're very good and they're very talented but it's a completely different world when you're on stage live in front of a real audience and it's uh it's much much more difficult much more challenging you can't do another take you can't stop and re-record you got to play it right and deliver it to people in a way that makes them happy and that they enjoy. So uh, for me, that's the biggest challenge of any musician is performing something live. Uh, so uh, I enjoy that challenge. Every night I'm up on stage pretty much uh, every night and uh, performing. We played last night in, um, I don't even remember where we were because we played so many times it's hard to remember. But it was a jam-packed, sold-out show with the winery dogs. And people were right up close to the stage. It was hot and sweaty. And uh, I had to sing and play and play bass pedals and uh, play some complicated parts, play some simple parts. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite challenging, and I enjoy it very much. I uh, just try to keep a positive attitude and move forward and try to make life easy for others. I don't demand anything ever. I only request things and only things that I really need uh, and only things that I can't do myself because of time or 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 some other factor. Uh, my crew, I always make life easy for them. Uh, everyone in the band, we try to be cooperative and positive and so there's not many bad times at all. Uh, we're on a, we're in the USA now on a fantastic tour bus. It's beautiful and giant. Uh, our crew are all wonderful, great people. Uh, band members and I, we have a wonderful time together. So uh, there's not really much bad that I have to deal with at all. Uh, I must say, you know. So uh, I'm glad about that. But that's how you make it. You make it that way for yourself. I know musicians that demand that everything must be exactly perfect all the time. It's never going to be. So just be cool. Roll with it. You know, so like make life easy for yourself and others. 
Well, I'm still learning. I learn more every day. Uh, it never ends. There's always more. Uh, I'm very critical of my own playing. I watch it very closely. I insist that it's the best I can possibly do. Uh, I work hard every day. I'm here in my hotel room on a day off with my base. I'll be working for hours today. Uh, I just posted on Facebook a picture of my fingers with calluses all torn up. People misunderstand that. They go, oh, it must be painful. Then, no, it's good. I want calluses. There's no pain at all with calluses. It's fantastic. That's where you get your sound from. It's your callus finger on the string. So many people misunderstand it, that it's a bad thing. But I, I've been working hard to get my hands tough and callous and torn up. That's a beautiful thing. I love it. Um, so, uh, but playing bass is uh, an adventure that never ends. There's always more to learn. There's always more to do. Uh, I spend my days uh, practicing, doing exercises, learning things, playing, playing music, uh, recovering things I used to do that I don't do anymore, discovering new things that I never knew about before. And uh, it's really a great, great uh, uh, endeavor to, uh, to, to, to play a, a musical instrument, no matter what it is. And there's, there's never a limit and there's never an end. It's, uh, and the more you know, the more you realize there is more to know. If you could ever achieve 100% understanding of music and your musical instrument, I am at about 1.5% right now. Well, they're related uh, to some degree because it's a human being doing something. There's going to be uh, connections and relations. I'm, uh, I'm pretty self-disciplined, uh, but I enjoy a freestyle of living. Like I enjoy a freestyle of bass improvisation. Uh, I, I, I don't read music, so I have to memorize everything. And then when you memorize it, you have to do it so many times that you don't have to think. So it's automatic. So I think that's what my, a lot of my life is like. I, I, I know things and I learn them, but I don't think about them. I just do them now because I understand. And life is, again, like music. There's always so much more to learn and so much more to understand. I'm a big fan of uh, knowledge and learning and self-education. I do that uh, endlessly. I'm, I read a lot. I'm, I, I'm working very hard on the English language to understand it more and better and deeper. Uh, I have a collection of dictionaries and encyclopedias. Uh, I have a big library in my home. So uh, similar to music, there's a lot to learn in both. And, uh, and I'm excited to pursue it and to learn more about everything, you know, about all kinds of things. I'm reading a book about trees right now, <laughs> reading a book, reading 1984 by George Orwell, which is an amazing book. I've read about eight times already. I'm rereading it. Also another book on Irish slavery, how the Irish people were enslaved, uh, a historical book. So I, I'm, uh, like music, I have, I'm very, passionate and interested in uh, learning more. I'm not so much into movies. Uh, movies are uh, limiting to a, a human being. When you read a book, you must create in your mind what the author is saying. So if he says it was a dark day, well, in your mind, you have to create a day that looks dark. That's quite an amazing thing. In your mind, you create the scene that he's describing. And he describes a character. You, In your mind, imagine how he might look. What does he look like? And you, and it, a book requires you to create. Requires you to create the scene the author is telling you about. A movie does everything for you. A movie, you sit there like a blob and they tell you everything and they speak it to you and they show it to you. And uh, movie 
goes into you. It's an in, it's in, in, in all these sensations, perceptions, your hearing, your sight, it all goes, and you can't con contribute to it at all. All you do is sit there and let it take you. A book, you must do it. You must create the scene. It's a battle scene. What would it smell like? What would it look like? You know, how many people? What you got to create that in your mind. <clears throat> so a book is far, far superior to a movie. But unfortunately, people are lazy and movies are very seductive. Uh, you can sit there and watch amazing scenes and incredible uh uh, computer generated graphics and the impossible and shooting and blowing up and car chases and uh, all kinds of things. It's quite fascinating and quite uh, seductive. But a book requires you to, to do something with your mind. So I prefer to stay away from uh, movies. I do like movies. I enjoy some. Some are, are, are quite, quite wonderful. Uh, but I would prefer a book or listening to music, great music, uh, great classical music requires you in your mind to create whatever scene that music brings up in your mind to listen to some uh, Debussy or I'm of course a big Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Tchaikovsky, uh, Mahler, uh, 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 Prokofiev, Mussorgsky, uh, many many uh, great composers uh but they all create an amazing scene in your mind so uh, generally i'm not too far away from music and any of my activities well uh i don't think it's through a lot i let nature take its course i sit down with my bass and uh, i'm tired and i don't really feel like playing but i have an obligation to myself start playing i don't know what to play just well then just do exercises and work out work your hands out okay so i do that and then suddenly oh wait i noticed on that exercise there was this little thing that oh let's let's go further where can i take that oh what if i do it up here what if i do it in harmony let me move it to a different key now and pretty soon you're creating so even when you have no idea or no creation do it anyway pick it up and get to work uh, there's something you need to work on. It's like when people write to me now, sometimes fans, and it's sad to see, you know, I, I don't know what to do in life, and I, I don't know what I should do, and, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how how to uh, continue. I go, go, go clean up. Clean up your house. Uh, clean out a closet. Uh, go wash your car. Go for a Do something. Do something, you know, and get moving. So on base, it's very similar. Uh what a start to get to work let's just run my patterns up and down the neck oh wait this one pattern that, that was kind of i just noticed something different about it oh where are we going with that and then next thing you know there's a bass line there's a song when there's a or there's music and then when there's music there's lyrics so now we have a song and so i encourage people to just start go and uh, that's my creative process pretty much Well, it's just a tool. It's a tool to create notes that when combined and put together uh, can be communicated to another person and bring about an emotion. That's amazing. So if I play a major scale, it sounds happy. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Hey, that's pretty happy. There's an emotion. You know, do play, play its relative minor. Oh, it sounds sad. Oh, and everything in between. It's, a, it's just a communication tool. Uh, and the... By changing the frequency of the notes, you can uh, create a whole world and communicate it to another person. So uh, whether it's piano, violin, bagpipes, banjo, bass, drums, human voice, or whatever, uh, all those things accomplish that. Well, as a bass player, uh, bass has a job to link time and pitch. Time comes from the drums, the beat, and pitch or melody comes from vocals and guitars. Uh, but bass connects the two of them. Uh, bass plays with the drums and gives drums 
a key. It was, you hear drums alone, what key are we at? I don't know. Well, the bass player starts playing an A note. Ah, we're an A. A what? You play a bass line, A minor, okay. Now there's chords and vocals can go. So bass is the connector between uh, rhythm and melody. And uh, that's our job. So, uh, but there's many other things a bass can do on top of that. Uh, so uh, my job in any band is to be very tight with the drummer and close with the drummer, and then be very aware of what the vocals and chords are doing and weave in and out of those with musical lines that connect them to the drum. And uh, so that's what I do in the Winery Dogs, Richie Costin on guitar and vocals, Mike Portnoy on drums, Mr. Big, we have a new drummer, of course. We lost our drummer, Pat Torpy, a few years ago. And our singer, Eric, and guitarist, Paul, worked with them on that. And I sing, too, so I had to also sing harmony parts. And uh, it's quite uh, quite uh, a lot of work uh, to figure it all out. But then when you do, it's enjoyable to perform it live. My, my friend Joe lived around the corner. He was older. And uh, he let me pick his bass up one time, and I plucked it. And I got a little blister on my finger. And uh, I think it was a Gibson EB3 bass. And uh, I was quite fascinated with it, and I ended up finally getting my own bass. I was very young. I've been playing now for 56 or 57 years, maybe more. And so, yeah, I remember the first time I picked that up. And Joe's still a dear friend of mine. Great bass player, wonderful guy. I don't know. I never really looked at it like that. I was so busy doing it. I never stopped to document. Well, today I feel like a bass player. I never, never did that ever. <laughs> I said, learn bass, learn some songs. Hey, you want to join a band? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we we got three songs. Let's get a few more. Maybe we can do a show. Okay, we're, we're playing a show. All right, now let's go get in another band. We learned more songs. I never never stop and think hey am i a professional yet and i guess the first time they handed me money that meant i was doing it professionally i made mean, my first gig was with a band i had with 11 guys four horns three singers guitar bass drums keyboard we did a show and i made seven dollars and don't stop and don't sit around thinking about that you achieved your goal uh some people do. They achieve a goal, and I say, "Hey, I achieved my goal. My goal is achieved. I've, I'm a goal achiever." You're, you're you're in the wrong place. Forget about it. Make a new goal and go on a new trip. Uh, so, I've uh, achieved many, but I don't think about it much. I'm looking at other goals that I'm attempting to uh, achieve. I want to be a better player. I want to learn more. I want to do better on bass. Uh, you know, so there's many more, many more goals, but I, I never really look at anything I've already achieved. It's very nice. I'm very thankful, very grateful, but uh, it's time to find new goals and continue on. Because if you don't have a goal, if you don't have a reason to get up out of bed and work on something every day, you're, you're heading towards death. Life is moving forward and resolving problems and figuring things out and achieving goals. But once you achieve it, you got to get another goal right away, or you're you'll be in bad shape. Well, I don't give lessons, and I'm not a teacher. Uh, I make that very clear because I'm just not. Now, I don't I don't give bass lessons. I'm a bass player. I'm not a teacher, but I do know a lot after 56 years of playing that I can explain to other players and help them improve their playing. So I often do, I do master classes, I do clinics. And uh, I'm not a formal teacher though. I, uh, when people say, well, oh, Billy, give me bass lessons. I, I'm not a teacher. I, did you just see me up on stage? I don't, I don't give lessons. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I play bass, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a teacher. Uh, that's a different profession. I'm, that's not what I am. But I can show people what I know. I'm happy to do so. Uh, and I enjoy helping my fellow musicians learn more and open up. Maybe I can tell them something that opens up their eyes a little more so they can know something more. When I do my master classes, a whole new way of playing for them now. 
and they're very happy and they're um, learning more and understanding more. So I enjoy that. I enjoy helping my fellow musicians a lot, but I, I don't uh, for lessons or, or, uh, or uh, teaching. I don't do. Well, I've done it thousands of times, so it's, uh, I don't think about it much. You know, when you get in your car and sit there and put the key in the thing and turn it and start the car, you don't think about that. It's automatic. You just open the door, sit down, close the door, put in the key, turn the key, look in the mirror and go. Uh, you don't uh, You don't think about it. And, that, and that's good because uh, if you had to think about it every time, it would be, it would drive you crazy. I must open the door. So I'm going to reach my hand out and I hold the door handle. Now I'll push in the button. Now I'll lift the handle up. Now I'll open the door. Now I'll go and sit in the seat. Now I'll get my key. And you would ne that would you'd, ne you'd, you'd go crazy. So some things when you do them enough become automatic. So I get my time to go tour manager. Five minutes on side of the stage. Okay, there's the cue. Give my, my tech guy gives me my bass. It's in tune. Walk out and do a show. Uh, that's so uh, you don't think about it so much. So I, and I'm glad because I I want to concentrate on communicating. When some people talk to you, you can see that they're thinking about what they're going to say. They're not even listening to you. They're just thinking of what they're going to say next as you're talking. And that's annoying. So I don't want to have to think about anything. I want to speak directly to the audience. Here's a song. And these are the lyrics that I'm going to sing them to you. And this is what, what, what it is. Um, and I want to hear, I want you to hear it. And I want to hear from you by your applause, whether you like it or not. So I'm not, I don't, I don't like to think. Uh, we have saying amongst my musician friends. Think, you think. So if you're thinking, that means you're thinking. Thinking is not good when you're performing. You shouldn't have to think. It should be automatic. When you're, uh, uh, you get on stage, you should know everything by heart. You should know all the lyrics. You should know all the notes. Uh, and it should be automatic, just like I'm speaking to you now. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm just speaking. So I think that's how music should be as well. Well, uh, I have done a lot of things that are unusual on bass because I've listened to other musicians, piano players, violinists, drummers, a lot, incorporate a lot of their ideas and techniques into what I do on bass. Uh, so uh, it's more than just plucking a single note. Uh, I utilize my hands and fingers in a, a very uh, energetic ways to be able to play things that are not necessarily played on bass. I learned uh, some Bach, uh, Brandenburg concertos and cello parts and violin parts. And uh, so it requires me to do a lot more with my hands. But that's just my style. That doesn't mean it's the right style or the only style. Some very simple bass players I love. I love uh, ACDC. I love Cliff Williams bass playing. <coughs> Brilliant. Doesn't have to be complicated to be good. Uh, so... Uh, and so sometimes I play very simple too. In Winery Dogs, when Richie's soloing, I just keep a great bass line underneath them so he can be free and solo. Uh, and then sometimes we do things together, some things I do on my own. But it's quite complicated and difficult to describe without actually doing it. But, uh, but as I said earlier, I'm still learning more and more all the time, uh, new techniques and new ways of approaching the bass. So if the adventure continues. Yeah, uh, I'm a live bass player. I don't. I prefer that to recording. During the pandemic, I recorded about 600 songs, maybe five or six albums, because I couldn't play live. So that was interesting. But I prefer to play live. But in the studio, you just uh, just a little more careful. Uh, make sure there's no clicks or pops. Uh, you can do a second take if you'd like to do it better. We're live. You can't. You get one chance only. So, uh, but I prefer live. Studio is okay. It's all right. I mean, some, I remember young players, you know, I'd love to be a studio player. I go, really? Why? <laughs> it's, it's not much fun. 
and you just go in and you do what they tell you to do. You got to play what they want you to play live. You're free. You do whatever you want. There's people, there's drinks and fun and beautiful girls hanging out. And it's amazing. Why would you want to sit around in a dark studio? So, so I prefer live, of course. Uh, many I have had and uh, many I just uh, want uh, uh, many, many little things that are part of it. Uh, it's hard to articulate as the one thing, but uh, I, you know, there's I have many goals and uh, dreams to do around my house with my musical instruments, with my performing Uh it's hard to say, but uh, there's always many, many things that I'm working on and working towards. Well, my legacy is up to other people. It's only up to me to do my very best and play as hard as I can, as good as I can, improve and get better and better and better. And then people will decide whether or not it has worth. Uh, my legacy is up to others. It's their opinion. I uh, I don't try to change their opinion, but I try to do my very best, and I hope they agree that what I do has worth and has value. And if that's the case, maybe I will have a good legacy. <laughs>